السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي الصلاة حي على الفلاة حي على الفلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد Indeed our praise is due to Allah We praise and we beseech and we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evilness of our own souls and evilness of our actions. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided them, there's nothing or no one to mislead them. Whoever he has led astray, there is no guide for them. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. He is one that doesn't have any partners. As I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger and his worshipper. Sallallahu wa sallam As for what follows for indeed the most truthful of all speech is the book of Allah and the finest of guidance and the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammadan Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the most evil of affairs are novelties in the religion every novelty in the religion will lead to innovation every innovation will lead to misguidance and all misguidance are ending places the hellfire may Allah protect us from the hellfire Ameen Before we start the khutbah I just wanted to give a short reminder to the brothers and sisters Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah He had mentioned that when the adhan is being called 
You should not start your prayer if you come in hearing the adhan being called. It's better to wait for the adhan to be finished and then pray two rakats with to greet the master. Because of the fact he, he used the hadith of the Messenger of Allah about shaitan, when he hears the adhan, he flees from it, passing gas really loud to distract himself from hearing the adhan. And he says when you begin praying while the adhan is being called, it's equivalent to what shaitan is doing in, the, in its meaning. Meaning you're distracting yourself from listening and hearing the adhan which you're reciting. So it's better to leave that off and wait till the adhan is finished and practice that worship of performing, repeating after the mu'adhan. It's that way you can perform both worship. The worship of, repeating after the mu'adhan, and then your worship of your turaqat. So this is an important aspect of the sunnah that Ibn Taymiyyah was the mudakkik about, was detailed about. From there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an, Kitabun anzalnahu ilaykum إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِ وَيَتَذَكَّرُوا أُولُ الْأَلْبَابِ وَيَتَذَكَّرَ الْأُولُ الْأَلْبَابِ Allah Ta'ala says a blessed book that we reveal to you Muhammad in order that they may deeply ponder and reflect over its verses over the verses and those of understanding will take admonitions and lessons from it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal nasa duriba mathalun mathalun fastami'u lah. Allah ta'ala mentions in the Quran, O mankind, examples have been stricken for you, so listen to it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is establishing here the Quran has been revealed to ponder, to take lessons from. To take admonition from. That's why some of the people have said that you make khatam and takhtim al Quran, laysa al maqsul and takhtim al surah. That the objective is not that you complete a surah in recitation. Your attention should never be when you set out to read the Quran, is to get to the end of the surah, to get to the end of the juza. But your, what is the maqsul, the intent, is that when am I going to aqiluhu? comprehend that surah when am i going to to take admonition from that surah when i'm going to to take admonishment from that surah when i'm going to implement this surah this should be your question as you're reading as you're reciting the book of allah for that reason ibn qayyim al-jawziya rahimahullah he says in his book madarij al-salikin wa amma ta'amalu fi al-quran as for reflection in the Quran, when we go over the Quran, فَهُوَ تَحْدِيقُ نَادِرِ الْقَلْبِ إِلَى الْمَعَانِيهِ He says that the looking of the heart, the looking of the heart, it stares towards the meanings of the Quran. وَجَمْعُ الْفِكْرِ عَلَى تَدَبُّرِهِ وَتَعَلُقِهِ And collecting one's thoughts, gathering all of one's thoughts upon pondering over it and trying to comprehend it. Well, he said, this is the purpose behind the Quran being descended and, re and revealed, as we mentioned in the ayah in the beginning, earlier. This is the purpose of it being revealed. It's not for the sake of just reciting it. Well, uh, without understanding it, without pondering over it and how it's going to affect your lives. In court of Ibn Qayyim al jawziyah rahmatullahi alayh. So that reason, we wanted to talk about some reflections and some pondering and some, give some admonition and understanding behind some of the verses from Surah Al-Baqarah in the beginning, from our beginning, the beginning of our father. Adam alayhi salatu was salam. Since that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ When Allah ta'ala says, and remember when your Lord said to the angels, Truly, I am going to place 
in the earth a vice general, a ruler, one in charge over that earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this address to the angels, informing them that Allah is about to do something new and told them after they understood the nature of this creation of Adam not knowing the purpose of his creation but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing them he's about to place the vice general on the earth Imam al-Qurtabi rahimahullah ta'ala he used this verse as evidence for the requirement of leadership and having a khalifa, a vice general and a ruler on the earth to establish the justice that Allah has placed in his book upon mankind. To establish the justice that is established in the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what we've seen through the practice of the rightly guided caliphs who came before after the messenger, starting with him alayhi salatu salam focusing on these areas that the ruler that's their job to establish ju justice of Allah's laws upon mankind as Allah Ta'ala bears witness to this and that ruler should be one of knowledge or surrounded with those of knowledge and have knowledge himself to be advised, to be given proper directions from his own taqwa, his own fear of Allah, his own knowledge of Allah, his own knowledge of Allah's names and beautiful qualities and attributes, his knowledge of the actions of Allah with his creation, how he rewards and punish, and what he gives for obedience, and what he gives for disobedience. Have knowledge of this, and that person being placed over the people to establish this justice, and aided by the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like this is what Allah initiated with talking about what he's about to place on the earth. That he's going to place on the earth indivi an individual who will be in charge and he will inherit this from generation after generation after generation. And the lesson here, the importance of leadership, the importance of rulership being upon his tiqam and righteousness. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mention this reality in the in his book and talking about this tremendous verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in, and remember when we said we're going to place to the angels that we're going to place in the earth I mean indeed I'm going to place in the earth a vice general so the angels understand in this reality about the creation of the with the sons of Adam may do because some narrations in the from the scholars of tafsir of explanation of the quran they have clarified that the angels inform of what his offsprings will do it will be those who will cause corruption in the earth it will be those who will cause spill blood on the earth and some scholars of tafsir going on the old israeli and the jewish narrations from their book so that it was the gens who was on the earth who Allah placed on the earth before us about 2,000 years and they caused spilling blood of, amongst themselves and corruption but Allah knows best because it's not from a hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so the angels was aware of this so in their natural response they said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min bab al from the door of trying to understand and get information not from the door of istikbar or being arrogant or thinking they're better than anyone else Qalu, the angel said oh my lord they said fiha. will you place in the earth will you place in the earth or meaning make leaders in the earth fiha in it fiha. will you place in the earth Man yufsidu fiha, who will cause corruption in the earth. And will spill the blood. It will spill blood. Not to have a problem with what Allah is telling them, but to understand the wisdom, to understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Ibn Kathir and others have explained. To understand this reality. Why are you going to place on the earth who's all, one whose offsprings will cause corruption on the earth? When we angels, as they followed up and said, 
when we know we are those us angels, we glorify you, we magnify you, we extol you. Nusabihu that we glorify you, we extol you. Bihamdika with your praise. And we clean, we purify you from all that which is not befitting of your majesty. All the def deficiencies. We free you of that. That's all we do. In other words, why not us? Why this creation? And they're going to have children that will do these things on the earth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded and called it, I know that which you do not know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed them that I know that which you do not know. And what was those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that those angels did not know? What was it that they knew that those Allah knew that those angels did not know? It was informing them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that's going to come from these offsprings and be at prophets and messengers that will come from these offsprings, shuhada, people who will die in the path of Allah, giving their wealth and their lives for the sake of making la ilaha illallah uppermost on the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that will come from these offsprings. As Siddiqun, those who are extremely truthful in their adherence to obedience to Allah and His Messenger to the extent their outer matches their inner in their belief on the unseen things, from belief in Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew He would place on the earth Salihun, righteous people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that He was going to establish these individuals upon the earth who will have these capabilities, that which the angels didn't know. And of the things the scholars of Tafsir said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew the, the kibbam and the kufr that was in the heart of Iblis, who know everyone thought to be righteous because he was amongst the angels. He wasn't an angel, but he was amongst their ranks. Allah knew what was in this, that which they did not know. And in creating this vice generate, it will expose this man for what he's for. Or this Iblis, this jinn for what he's for. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is why he responded to the angels, Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamu. Indeed, I know that which you do not. Which shows us the importance of placing our trust in alimul ghaybi wa shahada. The one who is the all-knowing of what is unseen and what is witnessed. As Allah Ta'ala says, إِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ أَسِرَّ وَمَا أَخْفَى In Surah Tataha, as Allah Ta'ala says, indeed He knows that which is secret and that which is hidden. That which is hidden. This is why, brothers and sisters in Islam, we have Salatul Istikhara. Seeking decision from Allah by praying two rakahs and making a specific dua after finishing praying those two rakahs, rakahs, units of prayer outside of one's obligatory prayer to help to ask Allah to help you in your decision making because who inna who ya'lamu sirra wa ma akhfa because he knows that which is secret and that which is most hidden. We don't know that. He knows that. He is the one who yaks yaksi fusu. Who remove the evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who in Yurida, if he wants for someone to give from his bounty, there's no one to repel that bounty Allah want to bestow upon a person. In Yamsaska, Lahu Bidur. And if Allah wants to touch any one of you with harm, Fala Kashi Fala, there's no one to remove it. In Lahu, except him. Understand that in your disposal of your affairs in this life and place trust upon what Allah promised you for being obedient and place fear in your heart upon what Allah Ta'ala promised you and threatens you with a punishment for disobedience. And understand, he knows the secrecy. He knows what's really hidden behind the chest and not you. So Allah Ta'ala said this reality to the angels. Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamu. Indeed, I know that which you do not know. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions that he taught Adam the secrecies, I mean the names 
of everything. The names of everything. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dis had displayed all of that, or Jibril, after Allah tore out of the names of everything, he displayed all of those names of everything before the angels. To show his virtue over the angels. In spite of the fact his offsprings is going to do what they're going to do. Some of his offsprings. To show him his superiority over the angels. Which was what? What's the point here? Al-ilm. Ilm ayyu ilm. Knowledge. What knowledge? Ilm Allah. Knowledge of Allah. Or ilm dunya. And knowledge of the dunya. Because there's no real knowledge of the dunya without first having knowledge of Allah. Because knowledge of Allah, you cope with more ilm dunya. Knowledge of Allah straight is incorrect. Knowledge of the dunya. Yaja'aluhu fil wasatiyya. It places knowledge in the dunya in the middle ground. Well, that, because al jahlu billah. Because being ignorant of Allah, yaja'alu ilm dunya. Mufarraqa al mufriqa. It's going to make the knowledge of the dunya either be lead, lead, lead to something of heedlessness or negligence or excessiveness with that knowledge. So Adam, to show his superiority, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him the names of everything. Everything. And he displayed that before the angels. And Allah she wanted to show them how he knows that which you don't know. And that's why Allah Ta'ala says to Adam, after he displayed them, he says, Inform those angels of their own names, their own response, the details related to them. Inform them of the asma'i ha'ula, the names of all of these things. Inform them of it. In kuntum sadiqeen. Allah, after he informed, after he had did this, Allah Ta'ala says, Ambi'uni, excuse me, my wrong translation. Allah says, Ambi'uni. He said to the angels, now y'all return the knowledge of those names of those things that Adam just told you. Tell me the names of those things if you are truthful. If you are truthful, he put them in a situation where they can be defeated and see the greatness of that creation over them and the greatness of Allah knowledge over theirs. To teach them a lesson. To teach us a lesson. Nobody has more knowledge than Allah. No one can be more trustworthy than Allah. No one can inform and educate better than Allah. And this is why the Muslims, they link their hearts to his book, to that book, with reflection, with ta'alluq, with trying to comprehend it. Then they strive to take the admonition to what striving took them to un of understanding of that book and striving to understand it. What it caused them to it could cause true change in their lives. So it could cause true purification in their lives. Like Allah Ta'ala did with everyone historically from the past to our day, from the time of Rasulullah when the Quran was revealed to him and what the Quran did to him and his Sahaba and everyone who followed that way to Yom al -Qiyam. We are we in regards to that knowledge so it can change our lives. The Quran ain't just for your children, brothers and sisters, because you think you're too old and you're too busy. Don't trick yourself to believe that nonsense. Look at the Kufar. You got women who are non-Muslim, men who are non-Muslim. They have children and raise them and go to college and work a job and still graduate. And you can't learn the Quran? Forgetting that shaitan sits at the door of any khayr. Well, you said bilquq. And he wants to turn you away from it. Delay you from that good. And we let him do it. Oh, I'm too busy. That's for my kids. And then your kids go learn the Quran and never see you with the Quran. So they'll be just like they see mommy and daddy. Even though they have memorized it. Even though they have learned it. You didn't give a good example. Because they do not learn your children. Or any human being don't learn from your words like they learn from your actions. And that's paramount. That's why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a prophet, as Allah says about him, he was 
nothing he called to except he was the best at practicing. Nothing he warned against except he was the most furthest away from it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah said to him, bear witness to his greatness, bear witness to his character. Innaka la ala khuluqin azim. Verily you, Muhammad, is truly upon great, noble character. Oh, Allah said about him, لَقَدْ كَانَتْ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Verily for you and the Messenger of Allah is a beautiful example. هذا وصلى الله وصلى مبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب الله تبارك وتعالى ويرضى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا وأسوتنا وقدوتنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تمسك بهداه ولا يوم الدين أمين أما بعد Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to teach us, brothers and sisters, from his angels how to humble yourself before Allah when you perform your worship. Or constantly. Because he constantly seeing and watching us. A lesson that we should take from these verses to purify our character by being conscious of Allah hearing and seeing and knowing what's hidden behind our eyes and our breasts. When the angel said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in response to being shown the superiority of this creation that he's placing on this earth over them and his virtue over them which is knowledge which shows your greatness is based on how much knowledge you have of Allah and his book and the son of Muhammad and the knowledge of the dunya and putting it in its proper place and using it to aid the deen of Allah using it to establish the obedience of Allah upon yourselves and your families and your community and your masajids like what hadith says, إِنَّمَا أَنزَلْنَا الْمَالَ لِتُقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ As the Prophet said in the hadith Qudsi did, that indeed wealth has only been descended so the prayer can be established. Using that knowledge to help you establish the deen of Islam. Not to establish what the kufar established, that which stops at the grave. But to establish that which starts here and continues forever in the hereafter. What's afdahu min hadha? What's better than that? The baqiyat al-salihat The remaining righteous things that will never disappear Or the Things that will Fade away and disappear So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Angels responded After they couldn't tell Allah the names of these things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says That the angel says Qalu subhan They said to you and far from imperfection and this is a statement as we gave a khutbah many months ago about the word subhanallah that is said often in the Quran Allah mentions stories of the previous nations and what took place is used to, to when you make a mistake and when you do something wrong and acknowledging at that point Allah's perfection when you have shown your wrongness before him subhanak that was the response of the angels. Glory to you, O Allah. Far from imperfection. Meaning like we are imperfect. Testify to his greatness while being conscious of their weakness and deficiencies. As we must do when worshiping Allah and fill this reality. When we give giving servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels said, subhanahu Glory to you, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ilma lana. We don't have any knowledge illa ma alamtana, except that which you have taught us. How many of us attribute our strength to Allah? And the only strength we got is the strength he gave us. Attribute your intelligence to Allah and say, and only intelligence I got is what you provided for me. So I must use it to serve you. I must use it in obedience to you. I must use these capabilities because I wouldn't have them if you didn't give them to me. Just like the angel said, la ilma lana. There's no knowledge for us. Illa ma alamtana, except that which you have taught us. For this, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the angels then, which is a greater thing to do, is to mention his beautiful qualities connected to that situation and names. 
إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ Verily, you the one is the all-knowing and the most wise. This is like the statement that the believer should keep the treasures from the Jannah, the kens of the Jannah. The statement, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There is no trying and no strength except with Allah. To constantly say this, freeing yourself from anything. This is why when we quote all the time the statement of Ibn Qayyim in his book for Wa'id, when he says the statement that none of you will know Allah till you first know yourself. And knowing yourself, in order to know Allah, you got to know your, in your nothingness and worthlessness without Allah in your life and his legislation. The more you realize that, you ready to know Allah in his perfection and your need for him. And your impoverishedness without him in your life. That's Tawheed. That's what Tawheed. Tawheed and you walking around knowing the three aspects only. No, it's what it affects you in your life and acknowledging your need of Allah in your life. Your need of his legislation in your life. Your need of submitting to him and loving what he commands and hating what he prohibits. That make you stay away from it. Loving what he commands and make you strive for it. This is the goal. And no one illustrated that better than the prophets and messengers and at the helm of them, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, messenger Muhammad. And then his companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and those two generations after them. As Allah froze them in time so that we can learn how to be these worshippers. Here the angel said this to Allah. These are the beginning. This is our beginning. This is how we started. These are the lessons we're supposed to extract from it so we can be better, be the best human beings that's possible to be done, which is not possible without the book of Allah in your life, without reflecting over its meaning, without the sunnah of Rasulullah, his authentic sunnah in your life, and understanding that the way the companions practiced it. That's where our success lies. Any success, any door of success we strive to try to go and seek through other than these means, Allah will close those doors. Look at Palestine. Look what's going on with the Muslims all over the world. We seek it every means, but the right means for success. So the door of success is closed upon us. As Junaid the Tabi, he said that when Allah Ta'ala told his messenger, no matter what door that your ummah tries to come through to seek his success in this life, it will be closed upon them until they come from behind you, Muhammad. And then he said the messenger of Allah came out and says, Kullu ummati. Everyone from my ummah will enter the Jannah illa man abha, except those who choose to refuse to go to the Jannah. Qiyla will say to him, man yet be ya Rasulullah, who will refuse to enter the Jannah, O Messenger of Allah? He says, man ata'ani dakhal al-Jannah. Whoever obeys me will enter the Jannah. Wa man asani faqad abha. And whoever disobeys me, he refuses. He chose to refuse it. So if you don't know the life of Rasulullah, how do you obey him? If you don't read the book, learn from the people, the students of knowledge, the scholars and the students of knowledge, how are you going to know this? How? If you're not reading the books that your teachers tell and the scholars direct us towards, how will you know? That's where our success lies, brothers and sisters in Islam. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقدينا وقينا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب وقينا الصلاح